Hi everybody, this is Steve Schenken, stuck home, like everybody, with my daughter here, who's helping me film a little video. Let me just, she doesn't want me to do this, but hold on a second. Hi. <laughs> that wasn't the greatest um, view of her, but uh, she decided to be behind the camera today, and I totally respect that. I would prefer to be behind the camera myself, which is why I normally sit in my room alone and write books. But... What I'm going to do today is share something that I like to do when I visit schools, which unfortunately I'm not going to be doing for a little while. So what I like to do is a writing exercise. And what I'll do normally is tell a story from one of my books. I love to research a huge history nerd, and I'm very proud of that. And I'll find a story that I think is great and share it. And then we'll all, within a classroom, we're going to write our own version of that story. So that's what we're going to do right now. And I've picked something from this book. Bomb, a book of mine, nonfiction book about the making of the atomic bomb during World War II and kind of a science spy thriller, which is a kind of book that I love to read and, and wanted to try to write in a nonfiction form. So that's what I did here. And I also, you know, when you're writing nonfiction, it's just as important as in fiction or movies. You need great characters and I can't make them up. So I have to find them through research. And this book, Robert Oppenheimer is clearly the main character. He's the physicist in charge of the Manhattan Project, this secret lab called Los Alamos in New Mexico, where American scientists are trying to figure out how to make an atomic bomb. And I wanted to introduce him with a scene, and I wanted to do that thing that teachers always tell you, and have teachers told you this, to show, not tell. Yeah. Do you know what they mean when they say that? Did they ever explain it? Because I don't feel that they ever explained it to me. They just said, show, don't tell. Yeah. And I was like... What do you mean? I don't know, but I think I understand it now because really uh, you have to do both when you're writing, but the idea is that if you're going to introduce a character, you could use a bunch of adjectives to describe them, or you could just show a scene. And if you can show a scene where by the end of it you really feel like you've gotten to know somebody, then that's very successful. And it's easy to do if you find the right research, which I was able to do for Oppenheimer. And this is a scene, right? And I mean, this is the beginning of. So page seven, right in the beginning of the book, where we first meet him. And I'll just read this scene aloud. It's just one page about Oppenheimer going on a date in the 1930s, way before World War II began. It's a, a chilly night in Berkeley, California, February 1934. On a hill high above town, a man and a woman sat in a parked car. In the driver's seat was a very thin young physics professor named Robert Oppenheimer. Beside him sat his date, a graduate student named Melba Phillips. The two looked out at the view of San Francisco Bay. I'll put a beautiful view of San Francisco Bay on the screen here so you could see what they might have seen. It was a fine view, but Oppenheimer couldn't seem to stay focused on the date. He turned to Phillips and asked, are you comfortable? You shouldn't do this on a date. She said she was. Mind if I get out and walk for a few minutes? She didn't mind. Oppenheimer got out and strolled into the darkness. Phillips dropped a coat around her legs and waited. She waited a long time. At some point, she fell asleep. She woke up in the middle of the night. The seat beside her was still empty. Worried, she stepped into the road and waved down a passing police car. My escort went for a walk hours ago, and he hasn't returned, she told the cop. The police searched the park but found nothing. They notified headquarters, and a wider search was begun. An officer drove to Oppenheimer's apartment to look for useful clues. He found the professor in bed, sound asleep. The cop shook Oppenheimer awake and demanded an explanation. Oppenheimer said he'd gotten out of the car to think about physics. I just walked and walked, he said, and I was home and I went to bed. I'm so sorry. And the reason we know about this is it got into the newspaper. There was a crime reporter hanging out at the police station and got a hold of the story. And I'll actually put up a, a graphic of the article in the San Francisco Chronicle, which must have been very embarrassing. This a story about a professor who went on a date, then proceeded to forget he was on a date, and go home and go to sleep. And it's kind of a perfect introduction to this guy, because he's a genius who can't remember he's on a date. And I even called the chapter Skinny Superhero, because he is being asked to be a superhero. He's being asked to save the world from Hitler in terms of making this bomb before our enemy can. And you start to wonder, gee, is this guy... See the right person for the job. We can't remember he's even on a date. But it's a perfect show, don't tell, because you've learned so much about him already. And hopefully you kind of want to spend time with him, the way you do with a great character in, in any kind of book or movie. 
So that's what I was going for in that scene. And what I like to do as a writing exercise is take that scene, the facts of it, and I'll put them up on the screen just in summary form. And let's all just write our own version of it from a specific point of view, in the first person, from a specific point of view. So take just the, the key facts of the scene. Oppenheimer's on a date, asks if he can get out and think about science, walks out in the woods, gets lost in his own head, wanders all the way home, and goes to sleep, and is eventually found by the police later that night. So imagine how if you were going to tell that scene from a... Let's make it a little... Let's, we'll veer into historical fiction and be creative. You can invent your own dialogue, but you still have key good facts to work with. How would you start? Well, pick a point of view. Pick Robert Oppenheimer. Pick Melba Phillips's date, or the police officer, or the de another detective, or someone driving by in the road, or who else? Help me out here. Uh, <laughs> she, yeah, I mean, you could make stuff up. I've done this in class a lot of times, and people come up. I, I, I'll be Melba's roommate. Well, I didn't mention Melba's roommate, but why not? I was, I was up late one night, and Melba came home, and she was really upset, and you could just start to tell the story from that point of view. So pick a point of view. Or you could be an, a dog, an owl flying overhead. I've had people be the car, um, an alien, you know, any, you can get really creative with that. And uh, and then the other thing I do when I'm trying to write is I try to watch a scene before I write it. And then I think, what's the very, very first thing? What's the very first thing you, as the as the reader, I want that I want the reader to see or hear or smell or touch or something? And so think about that. It could be kind of a big cinematic view. Two people sit in a car in this beautiful place above San Francisco Bay. Or it could be something you hear, something jarring, or some, some that affects one of your senses. And that's also often a good place to start. Once you get that, um, it can kind of flow from there. So I'll put up the key facts of the scene and some pictures that might help. And I would just say everyone just kind of write a one-page version of that scene. And then what I'd love to do is have people read aloud and we can't exactly do that right now but we sort of can i can you can feel free to email it to me at my website which is just my name and you could either record yourself reading it or you could just send me a page you know send me a, a word file and i'll and i'll read it aloud in another video so let's just take it from there and thanks so much see you soon